This is version 2 of my lockpick robot and it's about to pick a lock using hardened steel wires, 6 stepper motors, and about 1.5% of my life. Traditionally, there's usually a pick involved in moving the pins up and down, but we're going to do something a little different by using a special key blade where the wires can pass through and move those pins. But before anything gets picked, let's go back over a year and see how this all got started. This project turned out to be one of the most frustrating things I have ever built, with countless problems whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, it. and lots of times where I thought seriously about giving up. A common lock found around here has five pin slots. Each of those slots can be loaded with 10 possible pins. So if you wanted to carry around a key for every possible lock, you would need about 10 to the 5th power or 100,000 keys. You would also need a key ring that's about 195 feet tall. So is it possible to make a key that morphs into any key? And through some research I found a patent from the 90s where someone proposed using wires to pick a lock instead of a pick. There is one really cool advantage to using wires instead of a pick in tension. There are special pins that are designed to discourage lock picking. These guys are called security pins, and they have unique shapes that are designed to catch on the tumbler inside the lock. This usually discourages the lock picker, or at least slows them down. Since the wires don't rely on tension, it pretty much negates the whole purpose of the security pins. So I think the first thing we need to do is to make a working prototype that uses wires. We'll have a special key blade that the wires can travel through and a body to hold that key blade and allow us to test the pins by twisting it. From the body, we'll extend five tubes to hold the knobs that will push and pull the wires. And we'll make everything circular so it's easy to spin. And you'll see why that's important later. All right, let's draw this up in CAD and we'll send it to the printer. Like everything I do, this took a couple of versions to get it just right, but after a while it turned out. Here it is. There's five knobs on the back for each pin. It can move the wires in and out with the knobs on the back. So let's try this thing out on a lock and see how it does. So I sped this footage up so you don't have to watch me learn how to use the tool for the first time. But you can see it didn't take very long. It actually took about 30 seconds to pick this lock. So let's swap out these regular pins with some security pins and see how it does. So as we talked about earlier, because this thing uses wires, the security pins really didn't put up that much of a fight. It's the exact same procedure to pick this as it was with the regular pins and it took about 30 seconds. There it is. Small pins are picked. There is one problem with this. The resin is extremely brittle. Like I broke four or five in one night and I can't even count how many I actually broke. I threw a lot of them away. Uh, resin printing is still pretty new to me so I'm gonna go back to old faithful my old FDM Ender 5. Okay it's time to move on to phase two of the project. I wanted to take this design and create a new version of the lockpick robot. It's been about a year since I created version 1 and I think it's time we revisited and this design has some potential. Alright let's get started. The first thing is we'll get rid of these knobs and we'll add some stepper motors but we'll need some linear actuators stuck in between to move the wires in and out. Okay so the first version of the linear actuator failed almost immediately. I don't really know what I was thinking but I made a second version and it works great. So we're just going to print off six of those and then we'll assemble the robot.
All right, we got this thing all assembled. Let's try moving some pins. Yeah, they're moving. Let me speed that up so you can see them actually move. It's not going to work. It took five minutes just to home all the wires. And these stepper motors aren't going to cut it. Originally, I wanted NEMA 14 motors, but I was trying to save weight. And honestly, I was saving money too. These little stepper motors only cost me like $15 for five of them versus $15 for a single NEMA stepper motor. Turns out that was a bad idea. So you can see here how much faster I can spin the NEMA motor instead of the 28 BY stepper. And there's just no comparison. Well, saving a dollar bit me this time, so we'll just order six of them and move on. Okay, now we have the problem of mounting the NEMA stepper motors to the robot. Instead of redesigning everything and reprinting everything, I realized that I could just make some adapter plates. That saves me from having to print everything. Okay, with all the extra weight on the back side of the robot, we need to come up with a way to support the back weight. I think what we're going to do is just add a ring that connects to all the arms. This will add strength to the robot so it won't flex as much. Put some V-wheels below it and allow it to rotate on those V-wheels and it'll be fully supported. We'll turn the whole thing with a stepper motor that's mounted up front where the lock is. We're also going to need a way to determine when the lock has been picked. Now in version one, I used load cells, but this time I think I'm going to use an optical encoder. This will let us detect how far we're actually rotating the assembly and infer if the lock has been picked or not. As soon as I got this thing together, I realized that I had a major problem because I put the encoder on the robot side it's able to twist the key blade inside the lock. And because it's just watching for rotation, it's just going to keep going until the key blade is going to just get sheared off. So I'm just going to move the encoder to the back side of the lock and make an adapter to go into this socket. That should allow us to see what's going on inside the lock. So the idea here is when I'm rotating the key in the lock, it's turning this belt, which is hooked to an optical encoder. So we should be able to determine how far this is rotating back and forth. And then it dawned on me that I haven't tested this little NEMA 14 motor since I added all the motors on the backside. And I have a sneaky feeling that it's not gonna be strong enough. So, we're going to have to upgrade that motor. Yep, I'm just going to throw a bigger motor at it. So the first thing we need to do to swap out to the bigger stepper motors is get rid of the old NEMA 14s. And then we'll make a bracket to hold the new big stepper motor. And we'll print off some gears that'll hook into the old gear belt and spin the whole thing. really have an e-stop. Yeah, it'll be fine. And go. Ooh, -hoo -hoo. that is much better. Okay, I made a few changes to the key blade to make it fit in the tumbler tighter, but now it can't push the pins out. After a little bit of debugging, I realized that the wire wasn't going the way it was supposed to. Instead of going straight up, it's actually going at this really weird angle and ending up at the pin next to it. My first attempt was to print off a bunch of blades with the holes offset at different lengths to try to catch the hole correctly, but that didn't quite fix it. And it occurred to me 
this morning after weeks of trial and error that the original one worked fine. So what is the difference? So I'm going to jump into Fusion and compare the blade design between the original manual one and the one that we're using for the robot and see what the difference is. Turns out that somewhere along the way, I made the top of the blade thinner, and this changed the two points of contact with the wire rubs against it, which changes the path of the wire. So we're going to copy the thickness of the old blade to the new blade, and that should straighten it out. Alright, we're going to try out this new blade. Here's a pin in the fourth position. <laughs> mm, that's exciting. Holy moly. Look, you can even see the wire coming out of the top. That's exactly what we need. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Look at that. Yes. Alright, let's stick this on the robot. Rewire everything again. See if we can't pick a lock. Okay, let's recap what we've done so far. We built a working manual prototype. We designed a linear actuator. We upgraded those motors. Then we upgraded the twisting motor and we installed an optical encoder. At this point, I think we're ready to finish the firmware and test picking a pin. So testing in three, two, one. And I think it just broke the key. All right, I wish I could tell you that things were smooth sailing from here. However, at this point, this is where things took a turn for the worse. I spent the majority of time on this project at this point, solely trying to figure out how to get the encoder system to work reliably. The problem was mechanical backlash. I would tell it to move forward 10 degrees and then move back 10 degrees, and the encoder should have reported the same value, but it wasn't. It was always off by a few degrees. This was caused by multiple different problems happening all at once, which made debugging a nightmare. The first problem was friction. By having to tighten the belt for the encoder to read the lock tumbler, it was pulling it to the side and adding a lot of friction to the system, so it was causing it to stick. And I solved this by creating a new encoder mount system that put it in line with the lock tumbler and it allowed for alignment. The second problem was key blade fatigue. And this was caused by me compensating for the backlash in the firmware and I ended up over rotating to test if the lock had been picked or if a pin had been set. This resulted in fatigue of the key blade which slowly cracked the plastic and introduced more backlash to which I added more compensation. And this was a vicious cycle until the key would fail. I attempted to make a metal key blade to solve this, but I failed terribly at it because it required such small tooling that I just couldn't make it work and the plastic was good enough. The third problem was introduced while I was working on the other two problems. In an attempt to make the firmware easier and weaken the twist motor's torque, I swapped out to a larger drive gear that would make it a one-to-one -one ratio. However, this introduced a problem that remained hidden until I solved the other two problems. Turns out the whole time that this gear was just loose on the shaft. So I designed a new one that has a set screw to lock it so there's no more backlash and it also has some access holes for tightening up the gear. Okay, with the hardware problems taken care of for the most part, let's talk about the software. When I first started this project, I had high hopes of detecting when an individual pin was set right about here. This would cut the search space from about 100,000 keys down to 10,000 keys. And that's with only one pin. It gets better as you find more pins. Since I don't feel like waiting six days for this thing to pick a lock, let's load up three pins and try it out.
All right, doing a test of a brute force. Although I'm disappointed that it's not as fast as I would have liked, it is so satisfying when a project finally works. I'm not going to bore you with hours of it picking security pins, because all the footage is almost identical, it's just the pins are different. And I don't want to mess with it anymore. I made a completely new version of the manual pick. I put all the STLs for it and the robot, as well as the firmware on GitHub. You can find the link to that in the description. I've got plans to work on a version 3 but I'd need a break from picking locks. Until next time.